Welcome to AWS Solutions Architect Associate course, brought to you by INE. My name is Miles Carabas, and I'm thrilled to record this course for you. What should you learn from INE and me? INE is an industry leader in online and on-site IT training. Most recently, INE started providing Amazon Web Services training with focus on preparation for AWS certification exams. I'm Cloud a database architect with extensive experience in on-premises and cloud environments. I'm certified AWS Solutions Architect, AWS DevOps Engineer, and AWS SysOps Administrator. Let's now talk about the course. Why would you want to get AWS certified? Amazon is the world leader in web services, and its services are used by thousands of companies around the world. We can see that according to the source on the screen, 84% of respondents to the survey either are currently using, experimenting, or planning to use Amazon Web Services. 57% are already running applications in AWS environment. AWS certifications show to the potential employer that you have the skills to design, deploy, and manage secure, highly available, cost-efficient, scalable, and fault-tolerant systems on AWS platform. AWS certification would put you in the elite group of cloud engineers. These certifications are very valued by employers. AWS certified engineers are among highest-paid IT professionals. There are no required prerequisites for this course and for the exam. Even if you don't have a lot or any experience in cloud computing, system administration, networking, or databases, this course is the best starting point for learning AWS and starting with AWS certification. The main goal of this course is to teach you how to build secure, reliable, and cost-effective applications on AWS platform. In order to do that, you need to understand the basics of AWS services, how the user interacts with them, and how the networking works in AWS. As a solution architect, you need to be able to identify and appropriately apply AWS architectural best practices. The course is focused on the areas that are covered by the exam. The following topics are covered in this course. Compute, storage, databases, security and identity, management tools, networking and content delivery, and messaging. In every covered area, we'll go through a few questions similar to those on the exam in order for you to get a good feeling about what to expect when you take the exam. After you complete this course, you'll know the basics of AWS services and know how to interact with them. You'll be able to apply the best practice in cloud computing while building applications using AWS platform. It is also important for you to know that this course is a prerequisite for the next step in AWS Solutions Architect certification for professional level certification. There is a small number of AWS Certified Solutions Architects at professional level. The number of those who have all AWS certifications is much, much smaller. The first step in taking this course is signing up for free trial AWS account. The trial period is one year. This will be the only tool that you need for the course. The AWS account will provide you with the environment where you can practice as we go through the course. However, it's important for you to know that not all services are free, but great majority of those that we will go through are free. And you can cancel the account whenever you decide. Okay, let's get started. First, we're going to open an AWS trial account. In the search engine, type free AWS account, and then click on the link. Once on AWS page, you can see the details about the account. You are going to get all months free. Uh, 750 hours per month of compute time, 750 hours of relational database service, and 5 gigabytes on Amazon S3 storage. If you want 
more details, you can click on learn more. And here you can see all the details about the account. Then we can create a free account. Enter your account name. your email enter the password confirm the password and then continue choose personal account and enter the details about country address city and so on Make sure that you read the agreement. And then accept the agreement and click Create Account and Continue. On the next page, you'll be asked to provide credit card information. And then you'll get a call from AWS to confirm the code. And the last step is to choose the support plan. You can choose basic plan, which is free. And then your account will be created. Now, please log into AWS account that you just created. When you click on services, you'll get the screen similar to this one. You see that AWS is offering many services. They are grouped in different groups, compute, storage, databases, network and content delivery, migration, and many other groups. Uh, AWS console changes as new services are offered. However, the main groups, such as those compute, storage, database, and so on, will still be available, but will newly offer services. However, we said earlier we're going to focus only on groups and services that are expected to come up on the exam. And most of AWS services that we are the most interested in in this course are in the first few groups. Compute, where we have EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud. Storage, we have S3 and Glacier that we are going to talk the most about. Databases. We have relational database service, we have NoSQL database, we have cache service, we have uh, data warehouse, Amazon Redshift. The networking and content delivery, we have VPC or virtual private cloud that we are going to talk about. As we move through the course and do the exercises, it is a good idea to check the billing information from time to time. You want to make sure that you are not unnecessary paying for AWS services that you do not need anymore. You need to know what and how AWS charges for the services that are not included in the free trial, so you can either avoid them or remove them when you do not need them anymore. Typical example is an elastic IP address. This address is free if it is used. However, if the EIP address is not associated with a computing resource or the resource is not used, AWS charges for this address. To view your billing information, click on your account name and then on My Billing Dashboard. AWS will now show you the expenses for last and the current month to date, as well as an estimate for the next month. If you want to see the details of your charges, you can click on Bill Details. Now, you see your expenses by AWS service. You can drill down to the region by clicking on service in the bill. For example, in my case, the Elastic Compute Cloud expenses consist of expenses for Sydney region, six cents, and for Northern Virginia region, 10 cents. We can download the billing information in CSV format and print it. If we disagree with the charges or have a question for AWS, we can submit a support ticket with AWS. If you click on support on the right hand upper corner of your screen and then on support center in the drop down list, 
you'll get the AWS support page where you can create and submit a support case with AWS regarding an account and billing support. You can choose the language and how to be contacted by AWS by phone or over the web. If you choose web, AWS will post the response on this page. As we said earlier, the following groups of services will be covered in this course. Compute, storage, databases, security, identity and compliance, management tools, networking and content delivery, and messaging. However, not all services in these groups will be equally present on the exam. For example, you will need to know much more about the virtual private cloud and Elastic Compute Cloud than about CloudFront and Elastic Beanstalk, which will be covered under the section Other Services in this course. AWS runs on Amazon Global Infrastructure. Amazon Global Infrastructure is grouped into regions and availability zones, or AZs, inside the regions. A region is a geographical location where Amazon has its AWS physical infrastructure. Regions are spread around the world and their number changes as Amazon adds new ones. Don't worry about their exact number at the time of the exam. You won't be asked such questions. Availability zones zone is a data center in the region. There are multiple availability zones per region, at least two, and they are physically separate. Besides regions and availability zones, AWS infrastructure includes edge locations as well. Edge locations are deployed in major cities and highly populated areas around the world. They are not used to deploy AWS resources, such as compute instances or database instances. Edge locations are used as AWS Global Content Delivery Network, or CDN. They are used by AWS services, such as CloudFront, to cache data and reduce latency for the end user access. This is the end of course introduction.